Hey, it's Natalie Brown Rudd, founder of Because of His Grace Ministries and your spiritual growth coach. And here we are on another episode of Manna for Today. And we are in the beginning of a brand new series, The Seven Things Spiritually Strong Women Don't Do. And I'm excited about this series because it will definitely help you level up your faith to go to the next level. And as we look at what the spiritually strong women don't do, you'll be able to understand what you should do if this is your desire. And so thank you for listening and tuning in and sticking with us. And I want to just give a shout out to our sister, Danielle, who listened to episode number two and was able to get on the prayer call and share how she defines spiritually strong and how she is intentionally seeking the most high so that she can become that spiritually strong woman and grow in her faith. And so thank you, Danielle, for always being an encouragement and listening in and sharing your insights. Love you dearly. And so let's jump into what is the first thing that a spiritually strong woman doesn't do? And grab your journal because you want to write this down as you examine your faith and examine your maturity level and how you are in your walk with the Most High. So the first thing a spiritually strong woman does not do, she does not fall apart when her prayers aren't answered as she thinks they should be. And this is really important. She does not fall apart because she didn't get her way or because life isn't turning out how she thinks it should. And I'm reminded of how every parent experienced the terrible twos. If you don't have children, that's okay because more than likely you witnessed a niece, a nephew, a godchild, or someone's child having a tantrum when they did not get their way. You saw the screaming kid rolling around on the floor, kicking his or her little legs, mad and snot nosed, crying to the top of their lungs. And somehow the kid thought that this was the way to get what they wanted. Now, for some, it worked. And for others, it did not. For example, when my daughter was two, I was waiting to experience her first tantrum. Now, I knew it was coming because I had been forewarned by all of my girlfriends who had been through it. So I waited and finally the day came when it happened. And I remember it like it was yesterday. We were in her room cleaning up her toys and there was something that she wanted. And I firmly said no. And she pouted and then proceeded to do the very thing I told her not to do. And then it happened. She fell on the floor and started rolling around, crying louder and louder and kicking her little legs out. (laughs) And And I chuckle as I think about this. Now, even though I was prepared, I was stunned by what I witnessed. I honestly did not know how to respond. So I did what any sensible person would do. I walked out of the room and into the kitchen and started washing the dishes while shaking my head in disbelief. Now, to my surprise, a few moments later, my daughter was standing next to me in the kitchen and she said, Mommy, I'm okay now. And I said, good. And we moved on like it never happened. And you know what? It never happened again. That day, my daughter and I learned a valuable lesson. You can have a tantrum if you like when things don't go your way, but it doesn't mean you will get your way. Now, I share this story because sometimes if we are honest, we approach the most high like a little two year old wanting our way. And when we don't receive the response we are hoping for, we start having a grown up version of a tantrum. Now, what does that look like? We stop praying or we stop reading our scriptures or devotionals. We stop journaling. We withhold our praise and we're doing these things because truthfully, we are angry with the most high because he isn't responding to our request or perhaps he responded in a way that we don't like. 
So when we have our grown up tantrums, we naturally start wavering in our faith because we are no longer feeding our faith and staying connected to the father. We have allowed distance between the father and us and our loyalty to walk in his way. We have now moved from a space of trusting him to an insecure position of doubt and unbelief. And this is when we start to unravel and fall apart. Falling apart means that we lose our way while we're waiting for our prayers to be answered. It means that we allow doubt to drown our faith and we become filled with worry, anxiety, and fear. And if we don't rein in our thoughts and the stories we tell ourselves, we will become depressed and feel like, what is the point of believing if we can't get our prayers answered? Now, a spiritually strong woman, she doesn't fall out on the floor and have a grown up tantrum because the storms of life have come in and she is not hearing from the most high. Or life isn't turning out how she thinks it should or how she has it planned in her head. But instead, a spiritually strong woman understands that every situation is an opportunity for the Most High to show up and show off in her life. And as she goes through challenging situations, she understands that she matures in her faith to ensure that she is not lacking anything. So what does a spiritually strong woman do? She prays and patiently waits for the Most High to move on her behalf. And she continues to stand firm in her faith without the wavering or allowing doubt to drown out her faith. Now, this doesn't mean that she doesn't become anxious or that she doesn't worry or that she doesn't question when will this end. She does, but she doesn't allow herself to stay stuck in those emotions and she doesn't allow herself to stay stuck in those feelings because she understands that things are happening behind the scenes in the spirit realm that she cannot see. She lives out her faith beyond her five senses. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Because most of us are living out of our physical sight, our physical senses, and we don't embrace the spiritual aspect of our relationship with the Most High. We have to understand that our Father is a spirit. That Yahshua, his son, is a spirit. That the Holy Spirit is a spirit. So everything that happens in our lives happens first in the spirit realm where we cannot see before it ever shows up in the physical realm. And so being spiritually strong means that we live out our faith beyond our five senses. Now, oftentimes we give up. And we stop praying when we don't get the relief that we so desire and we think that we should have because life should always work out in our behalf. That's a spiritually immature response. And we oftentimes stop believing after we have prayed for a month, a few years, several years, and we give up. And we succumb to our emotions and conclude that the Most High isn't going to answer us. Or the Most High is silent because he's not hearing our prayers. But a spiritually strong woman, she bases her faith on facts and not feelings. So she turns to her playbook, the Bible, to find direction. And if you turn to the book of Daniel... And you read chapters 9 and 10, you will find a story about Daniel praying to the Most High for direction. And in one part of the story, he prays and he gets an answer immediately. But then the second part of the story, he prays and there's a delay. And Daniel's response to the delay shows his maturity 
and his faith in the Most High. He doesn't waver. He stands firm and he continues seeking the Most High. But what I love about the story in Daniel's chapter 9 and 10 is that it gives you a glimpse into what happens in the spirit realm when we pray. And that there is spiritual warfare that's going on that is causing delays in our prayers being answered. Because Daniel walked with the Most High and he was a righteous man and he was faithful in seeking the Most High, when Daniel prayed, his prayer was immediately answered. But there was a delay with the messenger getting to Daniel because of the spiritual warfare that was happening. And that is why you have to turn to your playbook because your playbook will tell you what's going on, what to expect so that you do not have to waver in your faith. But instead, you can stand firm, fixed and unmovable because you know that the Most High heard your prayer and that the answer is coming. Now, Daniel did not lose his faith. He was spiritually strong. But imagine if Daniel had given up and had stopped believing. Imagine if Daniel had had a grown-up tantrum. He never would have received his answer from the Most High. And as I come to a close, I know that I have given you a lot to think about. But let's turn the mirror so you can examine yourself. What do you do when you pray to your father And you don't get an answer right away. Or the answer that comes is not to your liking. Do you revert to your terrible twos and throw a grown-up tantrum? How do you respond? And in light of what I've shared with you today, what do you need to do differently? So what's your call to action? Because this podcast is not about me telling you a story about my daughter and her tantrum at two years old (laughs) or even giving you about the grown-up tantrum story. It is about you examining your walk. It is about you deciding how you want to show up in your relationship with the Most High. So here's one thing I'm asking you to complete between today's episode and the next episode. Thoughtfully ponder your answer to these questions. I want you to think about one of the challenging situations that you are dealing with right now. And perhaps you've been praying for quite some time, seeking direction from the Most High. Examine how you have responded to the situation up until this moment. Now ask yourself, how would a spiritually strong woman respond And what do you need to do differently to become that spiritually strong woman? This call to action step is critical if you want to become a spiritually strong woman. So do not merely listen to the episode, but take the time to do the reflective inner work and examine your walk. Journal your aha moments and be honest with your responses. I guarantee you, when you take the lessons that the Most High is teaching you through these experiences, you will become mature in your faith. You will become perfect and whole, not lacking anything. But you have to be intentional about seeking him. Because when you seek him with all of your heart, he rewards you. And his reward is... It's greater than anything you can imagine. And so thank you again for listening to this podcast and listening to this series and being willing to do the work. I hope and pray that you will show up for episode number four as we continue to look at the seven things spiritually strong women don't do. Be blessed.